As we um, shift our focus to communion, please turn with me to Luke chapter 5. We're going to look at uh, verses 29 through 32. Uh, Luke 5, 29 through 32. Here, um, Jesus has just called Levi, a.k.a. Matthew, to be one of his disciples, and now um, picking up in verse 29. And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house, and there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with him. The Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So here we have these uh, scribes and Pharisees. They're the theologians of the day. They're um, experts on the Jewish law and moral tradition. And they walk into Levi's house and see Jesus, who they know to be a teacher. And he's eating with tax collectors who the Jews essentially consider traitors and sinners, which in their eyes includes just about anyone who isn't submitting to pharisaical ordinances. The scribes and Pharisees are disgusted by the sight. They wouldn't be caught dead dining with such an unholy bunch. They saw themselves as righteous, and and part of maintaining that righteousness was to steer clear from associating with anyone they deemed unclean or sinful. Jesus, on the other hand, was on a mission to rescue the unholy and the unclean. Jesus had zero issues with laying his hands on a leper to heal him, or walking right up to a demoniac and casting out demons, or healing a woman of her menstrual issues. Jesus regularly had compassion on the sort of people the scribes would have avoided like the plague. Hearing the scribes and Pharisees questioning his disciples, Jesus replies, it is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. And then he plainly states, I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. Perhaps with a bit of irony, Jesus essentially tells the scribes and Pharisees that if they continue in their self-righteousness, then Jesus has nothing to offer them. In other words, if they don't acknowledge their sickness, they won't take the medicine. But those sinners who are seeking Jesus, however, are in a different position. They know their sin and their need for forgiveness. They know that they are sick and need a physician. Now, very quickly, before we look at the cure which Jesus offers, I think it's important we consider the severity of the sickness. This is the same sickness acquired by Adam in the garden when he ate of the fruit in disobedience to God. It's the very sickness passed down to all of his offspring thereafter, causing Cain to murder Abel, David to commit adultery with Bathsheba, leading Israel to worship false gods. This sickness is in fact the same which comes down to us today, manifesting itself in our deceitfully wicked hearts and acts of rebellion against our God. And this sickness is so serious that it results in nothing less than death. Uh, Please turn with me now to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. And we're going to pick up on verse 12 where Paul clearly spells this out for us. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Our great ailment is sin and without a remedy we are destined for eternal death in ourselves we possess no means of being healed so what is the cure how can a sick be made well how can a sinner be made righteous staying in Romans chapter 5 if you will pick up with me in verse 6 Romans chapter 5 verse 6 For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his love towards us 
in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. And so our remedy is nothing less than the blood of Jesus Christ and his atoning work on the cross in place of sinners. Those who, like the scribes, consider themselves righteous apart from the work of Christ will be found guilty according to their sin. But to the Christian who has repented and believed on Jesus Christ, your sickness has been healed, your sins forgiven, and you have been granted a righteousness not your own. As we share in taking communion, let us meditate on this fact that Jesus died for sinners. Now here at Anchor Bible Church, we practice open communion, which means that regardless of whether or not you're a member, as long as you have repented and believed on Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross, you are welcome to partake. If, however, you have not trusted in the precious blood of Christ on the cross and have not believed in the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, then please do not partake with us.